Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares and post them online for fun. And in this video, we're going to be making pixel art out of this, the Super Famicom controller. It's a controller that I love and I think it just could be a really good piece of inspiration for creating some kind of new unique characters. So I think the best way to get started is just to get a closer look at the controller. So I'll run the opening credits and I'll meet you over at the desk. So I just wanted to start by explaining like why I love this controller so much and sort of what the inspiration is behind this project. Uh, I decided a while back I wanted to pick up like some original Super Nintendo hardware and some games just because the 16-bit era is like really inspiring kind of style for me doing pixel art. Uh, but it turns out getting into the Super Nintendo is really pricey, especially the games. Uh, and that's when I found out about the Super Famicom, which is the original Japanese release of that console. And the games are like a fraction of the price, so it's much better to get into that way. And then what struck me too is just how the hardware and everything looked totally different. Like I was just familiar with the Super Nintendo look, but it turns out that the original looks like this. It's got four nicely colored buttons. And then when they translated that to the North American market, they took those colors away and replaced it with just the purple and lavender look, which I mean, that's cool. It became iconic in its own right. I don't know if they were trying to make it like more cool or something, but uh, for me, I just love how fun the original looks. And uh, actually when they released it in Europe, they called it the Super Nintendo, but it had this Super Famicom look to it. So there's kind of three iterations of these controllers out there. Um, but this is the one I have the console for. This one's just a spare controller. It happens to work on that as well. So we'll get this guy out of here because that's not the inspiration for today, but you know, maybe one day we'll make something based out of him. So let's just take stock of what we have here. Um, so of course, what draws me to this controller, like I mentioned already, is those four color buttons. I think they could just go on to become their own kind of unique characters that have different abilities or personalities, stuff like that. But then I also want to bring in other things from the controller too. So uh, just for a quick anatomy, we've got the, the D-pad, the cool sort of angled look to the start and select buttons, and then the left and right triggers on the top. So just in case you're not familiar with the controller, that's the anatomy. Um, and since this is the original like Japanese version of this console, I think it'd be fun to do something that's sort of uniquely Japanese. And I got the idea of doing these like Super Sentai characters uh, in the style of Super Famicom. So Super Sentai is kind of like the uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and, and all the teams like that. And they always have different like costume designs and different iterations within the team. And they're always like colorful outfits. So I think taking those four characters and then applying a Super Famicom theme to that could be a really fun project. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Uh, we know that the four colored buttons are gonna be our different characters, but I also wanna have the design of each ranger represent something different from video games, and then bring in other parts of the controller to complete those designs. I was thinking that the blue X button character, who I'm gonna call Trooper X, can be the leader of the group, and his character design is gonna draw inspiration from a theme of accessing a menu within a game. So this means he can be kind of a tactician and make battle commands for the other troopers. I'm gonna try to work in the start and select buttons since those are kind of vital for accessing commands and options. And I'll just mark off that part of the controller for our blue boy so that we know it's taken. The red A button is gonna be our attack type trooper. I really like the red color for a combat character design and this just feels like an attack button anyway. For his weapon, I think the D-pad could make an awesome ninja star but we could probably also figure something out using the triggers like maybe dual wielding swords or something like that. The yellow B button is often used to jump in games, or sometimes you hold it to sprint, so I think it makes the most sense to be like a speed or mobility focused trooper. They need to be real quick, so I think bringing in the controller cord used as a kind of grapple would be a really fun idea as well. And finally, that leaves the green Y button trooper, and I think the last gaming mechanic that would be really fun to work with is a special attack. Now I don't really know what kind of form that should take as far as character design goes, but maybe some kind of magical ability or like a healer type of character could be fun. Either way, it's just something to go from. And the final controller piece we need to bring in is, of course, the D-pad. All right, so that's the plan. Um, I'm gonna go think on these character specs for a bit and then hop into Pixeling. Of course, this is a video, so I'll just cut straight to the part where I'm working on the time lapses of the characters. So uh, good luck, future me. All right, first up is the menu theme trooper, Trooper X, the leader of the team. I started by setting up a sprite size of 45 pixels, which is a size that I really like working in and should also suit the aesthetic of actual Super Famicom sprites. I rough out the head and body as a stick figure to find the pose, which I decide to have him kind of pointing off, either coordinating a team maneuver or pushing one of his menu buttons. The important thing here is keeping the line of action at an interesting angle. Like if his arm and shoulders were just a flat horizontal line, it wouldn't seem nearly as dynamic. And the legs I keep locked at angles just to give it a confident footing on the ground. 
With the stick figure in place, I go over the whole sprite in black to create a rough silhouette and make sure that the pose is maintained and readable as I thicken up the shapes. Next, I start erasing from the silhouette to map out his main costume details like the helmet, some color blocking on the outfit, and a belt. I start filling out the rest of his costume using a black and white palette just to define how the contrast will look around the character. He'll eventually be blue, but I wanted to control the areas where the white costume elements will contrast with that, as well as how the shading will work. You'll also notice throughout the time lapse that I often flip the sprite to its mirror image. This actually helps catch mistakes that you might be overlooking. Like sometimes your eye gets used to an image looking a certain way, so flipping the orientation gives you a fresh perspective on the anatomy and the construction. Lastly, I go in and do a round of fine tuning and shading before adding the color. Since he's a tactician, I kept his costume pretty simple. He's got a clean rectangular visor, and there's an antenna on his helmet since he needs strong communication to the rest of the team. His menu elements have bring in his overlaid digital windows that he can monitor and manipulate with his hands. So I think what I'll do here is just fade the time lapse out and then move on to the time lapses for the next characters, and then at the end we'll bring them all together and kind of have like a big epic reveal of the whole team. Next, I moved on to Trooper A, the red combat type trooper. I started by copy pasting over the figure from Trooper X just as an easy way to stay within the same proportions. Then I moved the stick figure's arms and legs around just to find a strong fighting stance. As far as weapon choices go, I initially thought I'd give him the two L and R trigger buttons to use as like dual katanas. Then I decided that the triggers could also make really cool nunchucks, but ultimately I decided something on a bit more uncommon. So I went with a Tomfa design. Tomfas are essentially just a stick that has an extra handle part of the way down, and they almost kind of look like a police billy club in a way. And also, I used to main Talon back in the day on Soul Calibur 4. She had Tomfas and could pull off some really cool moves. With the weapon and pose selected, I moved through the same process of defining the character silhouette before moving into the finer details. I carved out the silhouette to give him the Super Famicom Team belt, along with some utility packs that I imagine could be like game cartridges for whatever that's worth in a fight, and also gave him a piece of white chest armor on his upper body. I wanted him to have sort of a triangular visor to differentiate his helmet from Trooper X, but something about the perspective of the triangle against the curved helmet didn't feel quite right to me. So I played around with it a bit and tried to move through and move away from typical Power Ranger type designs. And ultimately it comes out as more of a motorcycle visor that also kind of feels like a riot helmet. So I think that kind of works out well enough. Uh, but I'll save that piece for the big reveal at the end. Moving along to Trooper B, the mobility speed type, I imagined her kind of zipping through the air using her controller cord grapple. Again, I paste over the same initial stick figure to get the rough proportions, then start moving things around to find a cool leaping pose, with one knee kicked high up and the other leg just sort of floating behind. Filling out the silhouette, I tried to keep the suit sleeker than the previous characters, just to convey that it's a quick and zippy character. Zippy, does that make sense? Sure. Even the boots I made more of an ankle boot that doesn't flare out quite like the previous designs, cause uh, I gotta go fast. For the helmet, I wanted the visor to be smooth and rounded, and then gave these sort of fins or rabbit ears on the helmet to give further visual diversity to the characters. Because of the yellow color, she probably ends up looking more like Pikachu than the Flash, but you know what, I'm cool with that. Finally, I bring in the controller cord grapple, and wanted to have a cool comic book style look with the cord wrapping its way around her. I know that doesn't really make sense and would probably just end up with her getting tangled, but I've always loved this look in the Spider-Man and Daredevil comics. When I draw a really curvy line like this, I lay the path as best I can using my mouse, or actually a trackpad in my case, I work on my laptop. Then I zoom in close and add or delete pixels to achieve the right curvature. Generally you want the length of the individual pixel segments to slowly decrease as you're entering a curve. Like if you had an irregular pattern of 2 pixels, then 3, then 2 again, it kind of ends up looking very jagged. I lay in a round of shading and then move on to the initial coloring. Overall I was really happy with how this one came out, and this character provides a very unique look to the team. Finally, we've got Trooper Y, the magic special ability guy. I wanted to make him very different from the rest of the team to really push that special theme. So I laid out a pose where he's facing straight on and he's floating because I also decided that he can fly. I go for a sort of yoga tree pose with one leg floating straight down and the other leg bent inward and his palms together in front of him. I initially thought this pose was gonna be easy to translate into pixel art, especially because it's straight on, but filling out the silhouette became a bit of a challenge. The trick was in finding the right angles to have the knee and the elbows, as well as how the foot of the bent leg meets the portion of the straight leg. I had to move a few pixels around and brought back in the initial stick figure to make sure I didn't stray too far from the planned proportions. 
As far as his design goes, I made his visor a pointed cross shape to bring in that D-pad visual reference, and it also helps give a perspective that he's looking down with his head bowed, perhaps in the middle of conjuring up a spell or a special move. To further differentiate him from the team, I rough out a cape because I wanted him to have much more of a true superhero feel than the rest, to convey that his abilities are indeed superhuman. With the cape in place, I start on the black and white shading and then move on to color assignment. I love how this one came out, and I'll share it in a second along with the full team reveal. There's just one last thing that this team needs. After putting in so much effort into designing and drawing these troopers, I felt it was only fitting that I give them a proper team name and a logo to go along with the final reveal. I decided on calling them the Super Famicom Control Team, which I know sounds goofy, but I love the double meaning of the word control as in authority, and also control as in controller, where the very idea for this group was derived. I realized that I could use the two O's in the word control to contain the D-pad and the buttons, just like the orientation on the actual controller, and was surprised and amazed that the negative space in the letters NT and R kind of worked out to be like the angles of the start and select buttons. When creating large letters like this, I block out the letter space at perfect angles, then start to carve out the letter outline from that space. It helps keep everything spaced nicely to plan out the sizing beforehand. I kept the shading fairly simple here as the focus is on the team name and the controller details with the word mark. Alright, with that all put together, let's go into our final reveal of the Super Famicom Control Team. Alright, and here's the full team together. I think it came out really well, actually. I polished off those little button icons to kind of identify each player and have like a nice little logo for each. Um, also, just in terms of cohesiveness, I felt for like the team member outfits, they should all have something in common, so I gave them each that Super Famicom logo belt and the cartridge packs. I guess with the exception of Trooper B, since it'd be kind of obscured by her pose anyway. So I just want to go through quickly and share a few final thoughts on the design and the pixeling for each trooper individually here. So for Trooper X's menu design, I finished up his digital overlay HUD with some brighter colors and outlay them in white just to give a feeling that it's kind of this digital projected light. Also, rather than having all the windows floating off on their own, I chained them together with this trail of white pixels to aid in that visual flow. So he's got a status indicator for his own suit, a grid style map of the battle area showing the locations of other troopers, and then individual status icons to keep an eye on the condition of his teammates. The angled start and select buttons make an appearance near his fingertips as one of the main control interfaces. Overall, this sprite ended up being 43 pixels tall, excluding the antenna height. If you recall, I'd roughed out a sprite size of about 45 pixels, but decided to cut it down a little bit because his legs were looking a tad long at that height. With Trooper A, here's the ride helmet and visor design that I mentioned earlier. I think it complements his combat aesthetic really well, and it feels cohesive with the clean and simple design of his suit. To give a bit more visual interest, I added some swoosh lines to his tampas. Swoosh lines is the official technical term, right? It's as if he sort of quickly locked into this fighting stance. I also added the L and R labels to the Tonfas, mostly to convey that they are the triggers, and I also thought it'd be fun that they're in his left and right hands respectively. I kind of imagine that letter overlay playing out like he's chaining a combo together, sort of like when you're in practice mode of a fighting game and it shows your button inputs as you press them. For Trooper B, I turned her visor into a pair of goggles. I felt like that added a speed focus to her design. There's sort of this strap on the back to indicate that. I also colored her controller cord grapple in a light gray so that it wasn't pulling too much attention. It kind of rests as a nice secondary element this way. Another thing I want to point out, which is actually the case for all troopers but is probably easiest to see on Trooper B here, is that there's a lighter color outline towards the top of the sprite. When you're doing an outline sprite, sometimes rather than keeping the outline in a full black, it helps to strategically color some parts of the outline depending where the light source is. It also gives you an opportunity to sneak more color into the sprite. The color portion of the outline here is generally towards the top edges of the character, where I imagine the light source to be, and it's in brown since that's sort of the next darker hue from her existing yellow and orange coloring. And finally, with Trooper Y, I added some magical starry looking d-pads and some extra singular pixels to complement his special abilities. Perhaps they indicate HP being restored or something like that. I kept the rendering on the cape plain so it didn't draw too much focus away from the main outfit, and just added a few subtle fabric folds to get the point across. I added a metal bordering around his visor to be consistent with the styling from the other troopers, and also to emphasize the points on his visor for that extra spacey look. I'm actually really happy with how this experiment turned out. 
I think the gaming references cover a nice representation and also play really well together between the characters. Like, each one's fairly unique, but they still feel cohesive as a team. And I think the Super Sentai Power Rangers influence is clear enough, but there's still a nice balance of original stuff in there that the team stands unique in its own right. Alright, that is it. I really love how that team came together, and I hope that you enjoyed watching some of the concept to completion process. Um, also, I should state that this video is in no way sponsored by Nintendo or the Super Famicom. Uh, I mean, I wish that it was, so if anyone out there is watching from Nintendo, uh, and it still happens to be 1992, I love your console, and please hit me up, because I think if we made a Super Sentai Famicom series, it's just money on the table. Alright, thanks again for watching, take care, and keep it square.